Welcome to Graphic Tracer. In this video, we will give you a tour of all the tools and features of the program. We recommend that you watch this video to better understand what Graphic Tracer has to offer in helping you prepare your graphic for production. For more detailed descriptions of the tools and functions, please read the interactive help and view the videos in the help window. We open a sample image called Strong. When the bitmap is open, the program automatically switches over to the separate colors mode. We want to trace this image in three different shades. The default colors are black and white. To replace the black color with another, we click the black color box and then use the color picker tool to change the color. When we have picked the color, a new empty color box is activated. This means that we can add any new color that we want to trace. Using the color picker tool, we add a new color and then a third. When the colors are added, we can view which areas will be traced in what color by clicking process. This image was both noisy and shaded. You can see the edges become miscolored and blended with the text. When we press the space bar, we can see the original bitmap. Here we can see the edges are a bit darker than the rest of the background. We want the dark edges to be interpreted as the same color background. To do this, we first select the light background color, then we press the space bar to view the original bitmap, and then we also press the shift key. When the shift key is pressed, a small plus sign is shown next to the color picker. This means that we are adding a color tone to the selected color box. If we weren't pressing the shift key, the color in the box would change. Once we have added the tone, we can click process to view the new result. As you can see, the colored areas are almost correct. To fix the remaining spot, we can use the bitmap editing tool in the tool pane to the left. The paintbrush tool can be used to paint pixels in the selected color. Change the size of the brush to make it paint in a larger area. The second tool is the Bucket Fill tool. This tool will fill a complete area with the selected color. The next tool is the Color Filter tool. If you click an area with this tool, it will automatically be filled with the surrounding colors. If you have spots that you want to remove on the border between different colors, this tool will be your best choice. You can also use the color filter tool to remove many spots at once. Click the colors you want to allow within an area. In this case, the light tan color. Then click and circle the area you want to clean and all the spots are removed from that area. The image is now ready to be converted to vector. Here is another image that we will treat a bit differently. The text tool at the bottom has become both light brown and dark brown. When we press the spacebar to view the original bitmap, we can see that the text should only be a dark brown. We select the dark brown box and then increase the strength for the selected color by moving the slider to the right. When we click process, we can see that more of the dark brown appears, but some of the light brown also remains. This problem is perfect for the color filter tool. We simply select white, dark brown, and orange, and then circle the area, and all the light brown spots are instantly removed. Some parts of the thin lines are missing, so we will use the bitmap brush tool to fill in the lines. If you press the spacebar when you paint, it makes it easy to follow the pixels of the original image. Change color to fill in the missing orange lines. Try to avoid corner to corner pixels as these will not become connected. If you make a mistake when painting, you can just click undo or press Ctrl Z to undo the last action. Sometimes you may get images that have been enlarged 
Enlarging a bitmap image before you convert it into a vector is usually not a very good idea. The resulting graphics become jagged and you can often see enlarged pixels as square blocks. In the separate colors mode, you have an option called decrease resolution. This function downsizes the image and removes the jagged edges. If the image has been enlarged by several hundred percent, you may need to decrease the resolution until you get a smoother trace. With really small originals, you may not get a perfect trace, but it should be good enough to identify the font most of the time. This logo has the opposite problem. The lines in the text are so thin that the program has trouble detecting them. We will add the colors brown and green and then click process. As you can see, most of the text disappears. We try to increase the strength for the green and click process, but we still can't get all of the thin paths. When an image is this small, it actually might be a good idea to enlarge it. By pressing the shift key, the decrease resolution button is changed to increase resolution. We click it and instantly get a better original. The logo can now be traced and you will be able to identify the font.